a big difference. And so that's thanks to this long life they had, they could be known and respected all around Europe. So that was extremely important for the development of the whole community. It's a national stud farm, and there's one horse. monastery at one time. Well, it's not too There's a tower Only that was on the corner of the monastery. And down here is on the other corner. At one time there were about 500 monks here and they got down to 12. We made a nice model of the church. Everything that's white is destroyed. The only thing that's left is colored. Then, on the floor, five percent of the whole monastery still exists. A lot of it, people just came and took the stones to build other buildings. You can see a gateway. So this was the main gateway between the abbey and the town. So that means when you pass through the doors, you reach the medieval town. So then you observe a staircase coming down the hill. This was a narthex. Mayor Ecclesia was made thanks to Hugues de Semur between 1088 and 1130. The narthex was added in the late 12th century and they ended the work in the 13th century only. This church was at street level at one time and now the street level is up there. Romanesque church was 600 feet long. This model shows the Cluny Free Abbey Church, which was the biggest church in Christendom till the 16th century when St. Peter's was built in Rome. Parts were built between 1088 and 1130, and the narthex was added in the 13th century. What's remaining is in metal, and what's gone is in wood. church in 982. Here's the church in 1088. We found some uh, graves when we did some excavation. Many people were buried in the abbey because this was the antechamber of paradise. You had to see a local person in the region because the peasants didn't have this In Cluny they followed the rule of Benedict so they were Benedictine monks. And that seems to be a more recent addition. So the second church, so that was the Romanesque building, like the church of the village of Chapelle, but this is early <coughs> Romanesque. So the capital, that was at the top of the column, is representing some leaves, but you have something very simple. It's not detailed at all. This capital, representing some leaves, but it's really detailed. It's a real lace that was made in the limestone. So it's coming from the third church, 1088, 1130. And that's quite exceptional for that time in Burgundy. We think that the artists were not French. They were certainly coming from Italy. Sacrifice of Isaac. The brown was original and the silver is all that remains. is the real outside wall of the church, the southern wall of the church. You can see it very clearly on this model. Look at the gray wall near the red, uh, mm -hmm. red courtyard. 
So this wall is already so high, but even if we still had the church behind, we could not see it. This little wall is absolutely nothing compared with the size of the whole building. And especially uh, for the, the, the height, thank you. <laughs> this is only the one third. It is exceptional wow. for oh. Romanesque architecture. Yeah. And we can see what is 100 feet high when we go under the transept. Can you see mm -hmm. here? What is gray mm -hmm. is still conserved. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that this part of the transept is exactly at the same size mm -hmm. compared to the main. Yeah. So we see what is 100 feet high in a minute. So, so this is part of the transept, the uh, arms of the church. Perspective. Wow. The long had when the church was in here. We even rebuilt the base of the pillars so that you could see, you could guess where the nails were. We're gonna try to turn this This was all painted and covered with frescoes. In the fourteenth century it was out of style so they removed them. So this area has been plastered as it was in the 15th century. It was not made during the Romanesque period. This is a Gothic building added in the 15th century and it simply replaced a Romanesque chapel that was completely destroyed. And this is the above Jean de Bourbon, the first one chosen by the king who decided to erect a private chapel. So you have all around the room beautiful sculptures that are representing the prophets of the Old Testament. We know who they are because their names, have a look, are engraved in the stone. And even if you don't know anything about the history of this place, you can easily guess that here, 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 we had some of the sculptures. Mm -hmm. They were representing the apostle of the New Testament, but the same the name, have a look, are engraved in the stone. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the sculptures are today. The city disappeared, certainly during the turmoil of the French Revolution. Fireplace got added here to heat this area, but under the Benedictine rule, there was no heat in this whole place except in the kitchen for cooking. When the French king got control over the abbey, he added the fireplace. They had heat for cooking and for keeping the ink from freezing. That was it. This is a cloister. Church in France at one time controlled 20% of the land. So this is a sanctuary of Cluny II. It's a 13th century chapter room and the cloister out there. That was a 13th century floor. There's people who died for their country. This is early 1900, so before um, so World War I. And here's some more. And down here is World War I. Before World War I. And here's some more from World War I. The school of Clooney.